Congratulations, you serve the sweet the jackpot. Clicking this video automatically makes you amongst the luckiest man of the day because the video you're about to watch will be the finest piece of educational content ever uploaded in this platform. What we'll be discussing on this video is what most modern scientists have declared impossible, creating a real-life super soldier. We will explore what it would take to push the human physiology to the absolute limit, maximizing the super soldier triangle, strength, endurance, and durability without violating any law of physics and with, you know, slightly sweaty biology. Here we go. We are talking about someone strong enough to lift 10 times their body weight, tough enough to survive a 70 meter fall on flat concrete or being shot at point blank range, and lastly, with such monstrous stamina that allows him to sprint for hours without gasping for air. Make no mistake, this is not a Captain America fantasy. Oh please, have some respect, Steve Rogers a total fraud, put him next to our guy and trust me, he looks like your average Joe. We are creating a man that is worthy standing shoulder to shoulder with absolute freaks of nature like Online Orton, New Delhi Ronaldo, World Cup Kante, Pri Barrera, Prince Nassim, and of course, that 25th minute of Cody Nolov Gabran. There are only two criteria for our super soldier. He needs to max out the super soldier triangle. He needs to look human. So we cannot have an 8 foot giant weighed at 450kg, nope, no juggernaut involved. Let's just kill him at a modest 6 feet 2 weighed about 100kg. Now, starting with strength, how do we cram the strength of an elephant into the size of a human? Before that, I want to mention one thing. You know, every time I think about super soldier, chimpanzee comes to mind. They might not be as strong as elephant, but you know they are bizarrely strong for a creature that share the same size as us. Well, not even to be fair, they are significantly smaller. Look, for most of my life, my dream pet had always been a chimp until I read way too many stories of people being brutally disfigured by them. It's honestly perplexing to me how this tiny human can possess twice the strength of an average adult male, pound for pound. I mean, you don't really hear people discussing on how to fight a chimp. It's always about what to do to survive a chimp's attack because there is no such thing as brawling out with an adult chimp. Same way, if you put me in a ring against fresh other prison, Mike Tyson, you think I am there to win? No! I'm there to survive 12 rounds and pray that my mandible is somehow still intact. Speaking on surviving a chimp's attack, that was how my question on chimp's ridiculous strength was answered. I encountered a video on YouTube, maybe it was a Joe Rogan podcast, about what to do if you get attacked by a group of chimp in the jungle. The video said, you have to run to the nearest river because chimps know they can't swim and if they do, they will just sink thanks to their insanely high muscle to fat ratio body. For information, muscle is denser than fat so it's not like they do not know to swim but they are just biologically designed not to. It's like throwing a brick into the river and expect it to float. With that, let's apply the very same concept on our soldier. We need this dude to have 20 to 1 muscle to fat ratio. To achieve that, we are going to start with some hormonal treatments. In other words, juicing him up with testosterone, IGF-1, HGH. See, don't need a picture for that. These are hormones that promote hypertrophy. Still not enough. When he was still an embryo, using the CRISPR technology, we must cut out the fragment in his DNA that contains the myostatin gene. Yep, you hit it right. Our super soldier program will only be successful if you start from the get-go. You know, Homelander style. This is the gene that translates to 
myostatin production, the hormone that inhibits muscle development. And we don't want them at all to be circulating in our soldier's body. We have seen in the lab and in the nature what happened when there is a mutation that caused this gene to be underexpressed. You basically end up producing a walking slap of muscle. Now, supposedly, I would use AI to generate an image of how the super soldier will look like after maxing out each corner of the triangle. But after realizing how much I suck at AI, here's an pff, overly edited image of bodybuilder straight out of a early 2010s YouTube thumbnail. Before moving on to durability, I feel the need to mention this thing called neuromuscular efficiency. It explains how construction workers, even with their kebab and Pepsi build, still can live like professional bodybuilders. And no, I'm not talking about lifting technique. Years of carrying bricks and sandbags have trained their nervous system to recruit more muscle fibers when making those movements. If you, the ordinary dudes, were to lift those loads, it will feel brutally hard. Not because you lack muscle mass, which you do, but more to not enough contractile units involved during that action. Moving on to durability. Skin as thick as rhinos and bones as hard as steel. For the skin, we can increase collagen production. There are a lot of ways to increase collagen in the body. Um, hormone treatments, consuming supplements, high protein diet, etc. Cool, now the skin is tough. But that is just for the foundation. Now for the real armor. Have you ever wondered why there is that weird white crusty layer formed under your feet when you walk too much outside barefoot? Yeah, you, me, good hygiene, never experienced that. Anyway, that is called hyperkeratosis. See, the outermost layer of your skin is always coated with a very thin layer of dead keratinized cells. The cells shed quickly and replaced by new ones produced by keratinocytes underneath undergoing mitosis. But in hyperkeratosis, the shedding is delayed and the mitosis rate of keratinocytes is faster than usual, causing buildup of those cells. Now, the layer becomes noticeably thicker and helps to protect your delicate skin against cut, friction, and heat. The reason I tell you all this because I want to cover his entire body with it. Not only that, this time it's stronger and thicker compared to what normally form under your feet. Yeah, I know. He already looks hideous from that uncontrolled hypertrophy and now I'm just transforming him into the monsters from Quiet Place. But I'm just saying, having the morphology of Death Angel might not sound too bad in this case because last time I checked, they have a reputation of unstoppable and impenetrable killing machine. That sounds a lot like what we're aiming for in this video. The only downside is we cannot have him as the nation's poster boy like Steve Rogers for America. This super soldier is not built for any PR and we most probably have to force him to wear full body costume every time he's in the public. Leaving all that behind, to cover his entire body with this armor, we have to crank up the rate of mitosis in keratinocytes, basically telling them to divide like it's trying to cover a wound forever. Or in other words, they are forever stuck in hyperkeratosis mode. This can be done by altering the genes that control um, keratinocytes mitosis, making them to be overexpressed. We are still in the process of maximizing the durability. But enough with skin, let's talk about bones. The cells that create the bone matrix is called osteoblasts. And what makes the bone stronger and denser is not really the increase in osteoblasts but their collagen secretion into the bone matrix and their calcium and phosphate deposition onto the collagen fibers. The best analogy that I could give to you is osteoblasts are construction workers. They lay down collagen 
for frameworks which then pour minerals all over as cement and there you go that is how your bones are constructed to strengthen his bones we need to apply hoof's law into his daily exercise his bones must experience micro fractures throughout the matrix structure the damaged areas are sensed by osteocytes which then send signals to osteoclasts to clear them out so the areas can be rebuilt by osteoblasts with a denser arrangement of collagen and minerals often using a different layout that's better at withstanding the same kind of stress in the future a bit confusing that's all right you know this channel we provide you with the most perfect analogy possible let's say i have a brick wall on top of the wall i place a 100 kg weight long enough multiple fractures will form all over the wall not only on the surface but deep within the fractured or cracked bricks will be removed and replaced by stronger ones these new bricks are stronger because they are made with denser materials and they will be placed into the wall following a different arrangement that is more effective in supporting such loads good enough right combat athletes like kickboxers and muay thai fighters take advantage of this law by lifting heavy weights they're able to place repeated stress on the bones like the femur consistently stimulate the bone remodeling and reinforcing it from the inside out this makes the bone matrix better at absorbing stress so it doesn't easily fracture when kicking opponents some fighters go even further using shin conditioning techniques like rolling a wooden rod along the shin to purposely cause micro fractures across the surface to enhance this effect we can continue pumping our soldier's body with testosterone igf1 and of course hgh as these hormones boost osteoblast activity and for igf1 it also increases the number of osteoblasts i hope none of you guys are assuming that our body can synthesize its own calcium I know you guys are better than that. We have to eat calcium rich food to supply the osteoblast. For this reason, once our future soldiers stop suckling, we'll be feeding him nothing but the highest quality cheese and milk that money can buy. One important thing you guys need to know is not only our bones need calcium, other organs do too. And when the blood calcium level falls below the optimal range, your body will start stealing it from the bones, slowly making them more fragile and brittle over time. Come on, we cannot let freaking osteoporosis becomes our super soldier, arc nemesis. Let's not forget about vitamin D. He needs plenty of them too to make sure that all the premium calcium he's consuming actually get absorbed by the body, not just end up getting urinated out. With that, take a look at our creation here. Not only a walking slab of muscle, but a walking slab of muscle reinforced with biological armor. If you notice, both hypertrophy and osteogenesis revolve around testosterone. And this is why once he reached the age of 12, we will sponsor his trip to Turkey for that, you know, hairline revival. And this is also why male is genetically, I repeat, genetically stronger and tougher than female. Finally, we get to endurance, the trickiest one amongst the three. It's mostly about fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. We use more fast twitch for explosive movements and we use more slow twitch for sustained movements. Fast twitch muscle fibers are easier to fatigue as they use more energy per contraction since they are much larger in size, have faster contraction and less mitochondria. Do you still remember that one gorilla versus 100 humans debate? Of course you do. It's completely understandable why most people pick gorilla. Like you could rip a man's limb clean from the body, but realistically in an ambush, it would definitely gas out after a couple swing. Just take a look at his first twitch versus sewer twitch muscle fibers ratio for 
human, the ratio is one to one. Completely acceptable, nothing crazy, but for Gorilla, it's 17 to 3. Just outrageous. Other than altering the genes during his embryonic development to favor more slow twitch muscle fibers, we can also raise him on a strict endurance training program. Over time, his muscle cells will adapt to the intensity by packing in more mitochondria, the energy factories inside cells. It's not like one group of cells differentiating to another, but we are making them behaving more like ones. This is why elite endurance athletes have insane stamina because their muscle cells are loaded with mitochondria, like way more than an average person. Oxygen and carbon dioxide travel in the blood by hitching a ride on red blood cells. So more red blood cells means better gas exchange. Faster oxygen delivery to muscle cells, faster carbon dioxide removal from the body. Simply making it harder for us to get tired. To pull this off, we'll be flooding his circulatory system with EPO. I forgot what it stands for, honestly. What do I know is, this is the same hormone that's gotten a lot of USD fighters busted for doping. Because it literally makes them a freaking cardio monster. It works by signaling the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. A little gene alteration won't hurt. Let's tweak his genes to give him a thicker heart wall for stronger heart contraction. That means more blood pump in and more blood pump out every single bit. Next, a pair of lung with abnormally large volume. If Michael Phelps can have it, why not our super soldier? Like, don't you find it a bit ironic that the greatest swimmer alive just happens to have lungs that twice the size of average adult males? And just like that, we are done engineering our specimen. Take a look at the final product. A walking war machine made to conquer nation. Strike fair in the enemy eyes. If you actually understood this entire video, you would know that there is one big problem that we just cannot solve, which is Strength and endurance cannot be maximized in the same body. It just does not work physique wise. But that's fine. Because now our soldier actually looks more human and we managed to solve the flexibility issue. Hey, the greatest MMA fighters, they are not bulky like bodybuilders. They are lean, built for stamina and fluidity. Take a look at the goods. John Jones, Mighty Mouse. Dominic Cruz, Khabib, Israel Adesanya, they are all on the same side. This is the end of the video, I guess. We are done. I'm done. I'm not surprised this video is over 30 minutes long, which is not at all smart for a YouTube channel with zero subscription. Anyway, there you go. I'm sorry if it doesn't look fancy enough for you. Efficiency is what matter here. All left to do now is hand him a shield, give him a glock, equip with a switch, why not? And yeah, he's more than ready to fight for your oil. Like a wheels. Thank you for watching.